Hi, my name is Steve Kinsley. I'm the Chief Wackadoo at Wackadoo Information Systems. Today we're talking about Sponsor Care. Now this is an application that was written for a specific ministry supporting a specific orphanage in Africa, but this is something that is on the edge of being generalizable to multiple situations. So what's happening is we've got a number of people who are sponsoring a number of kids. There are various permutations for how those sponsorships can happen. You might have one person sponsoring multiple kids. You might have one kid being sponsored by multiple people. You might have whatever breakdown of that combination of that in between. What this lets you do is to keep track of, uh, from the sponsor standpoint, when they make donations, are the children that they're sponsoring, are they paid through their academic year? How far along are they? And to be able to keep track of some of the statistics and some of the information about that so that you can contact people and, and keep them informed for how the children are doing and where the status of their current donations are. So let's take a quick look. Just walking down the pages, we're going to start at the top. And as we said, that we start with the idea of a ministry year. Now this is actually like a school year. Think of it this way. This would normally be September and this would normally be June. Uh, this is randomly generated data. So uh, forgive me if it doesn't all make logical sense. Now on the other end of the donations, you might have multiple organizations. So these would be places that you're working with in the field. So you might be making donations to First Presbyterian in another country. These all say USA because that was hard-coded in the random data, not very random. Um, or Joe's Church at some place or St. Barnabas uh, Orphanage in another country, uh, things like that. But this would be these would be organizations who are taking care of the kids on the other end. Then you also have the idea of the schools that those kids are going to. So you might have a number of different schools. Each school might have a different cost for, uh, say, preschool, elementary, secondary um, schools. They, they might have different cost structures and things like that. And so you would list your schools here that the kids are assigned to. Then you have your sponsors. And again, this is all random data. None of it's real. If you see a name that actually looks familiar, that's complete coincidence. So we've got 60 randomly generated sponsors. You have the, the ability to put in multiple notes per sponsor. So I'm going to click on a sponsor here, and you're going to see that you've got a number of notes that you can do here. And I'm just going to add a new note, and I'm going to type in something really original. That's a new note. And you'll see that when you put notes in, it's whatever information you need to track about those sponsors. Well, you can go look at just the notes. Now, because I have Justin Alvarado still selected here, um, you only see the notes for Justin. But if I unselect Justin, you'll see that I've got 290, however many that is, I've got my glasses on, 298 um, notes for various different sponsors. Now we come to the heart of the matter, and this, these are the children who are being served by the, by the organizations at the other end. Whoops, children, here we go. So we've got 100 in our sample set, and they are associated with an organization, and they are the kids are going to whatever school. Now, one of the things that you'll see here, you've got gender, you've got date of birth, you've got the grade that they're in at school, and you have a monthly cost. Now, again, these are all randomly generated. Um, and the idea is that you could have a general fund donation as well um, that's not specifically aimed at a, per, at a kid. Um, that is actually a, an illogical uh, output of a random data generator. This would say general fund or something like that instead of James Blankenship. So just like sponsors, there are notes for your children. So here's another new note, another new note, and I'll just drop that in. And so you can keep track of the notes there. Well, you also have the ability to put a picture in here of the child. And so you can upload a JPEG, GIF, uh, PNG, PNG file. You can assign which organization they're affiliated with, which school they're going to, what grade they're in, all of these things. Now, the fact that there is a monthly cost associated with each child is important for when we get to donations. So let me unselect Landon Becker. Same trick with child notes. If I select a person, I'll only see that person's notes. Um, if I don't have anyone selected, I've got 526 in our sample set. Now we go to donations. Now, the donations are something that you, 
this website was built, this application was built around the idea that there is a ministry year. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave in all of our donations over time so that we keep track of the history of that if you want to. If you don't and you want to go year to year, you have this wonderful clear all button that will just wipe out all of the donations that you've got in the system to date. And we're going to do that right now. So I'm going to delete all of the donations and it takes a second and it goes through to the server and says, bang, you're gone. Okay, now we don't have any donations in the system. Now we have the next page. We're going to come back to donations. We're going to spend a lot of time there. We're going to go to sponsorships and we're going to realize that we have, oh, I've already reset it for this video. Okay, um, to, when you hit the reset all paid through dates, you have the concept of a sponsorship being paid through. This is not associated with the individual child because you might have a situation where a child is sponsored by more than one person. But Ethan Jimenez is sponsoring some or all of Ava Salinas's expenses and this sponsorship is paid through this particular date. Now, we just hit the reset all paid through and that goes to May 1 because that's how we define the beginning of our ministry date. Hopefully you see how that ties together. Now, when you have a child definition, and we're going to just pick Landon Becker again, we have the ability to go in and add resource files for Landon Becker. If I say new, you'll see that the recipient ID is hard-coded. If I unselect that and say new, then I can pick whichever child I want to to be the um, the recipient here. I save that and then I come in again and say edit and now I can upload any graphics file that I want to up to five megabytes. Actually not graphics file, any file. This could be a PDF, this could be a report card, this could be something that um, the child provides back in order to provide information to the people who are sponsoring them, which is frequently uh, an activity that occurs um, uh, it could be around Christmas, could be uh, once a quarter, once a month, um, whatever, however the ministry is set up to do that. So I'm going to get rid of this guy because I'm not putting anything in there. Um, then we have our, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty standard bulk mailer page. Uh, we have a number of reports that have email fields in them. And we have... Then we have then we have a fairly standard bulk emailer page. Um, what this is doing is giving you a list of reports that have an email field in it that you can send, uh, uh, you can blast email out of whatever status you're looking for. So for example, you might do a child update report and there aren't any selections here. Um, you might have uh, birthdays coming this month. You know, just to remind your sponsors who, who they are uh, in the next three months is probably a little bit more reasonable to give people some time to get something overseas. Um, you can do annual contribution reports and send out a note to the sponsors saying, you know, here's how much you've done each year, that kind of thing. Now, the other thing that happens down here below is you select your email template. Now, your email template is what is used to form each of the um, it is used to form each of the emails that goes out. And there's an entire separate video on both reports and on email templates. Those are two separate videos uh, that you can go look at to figure out how to do that. We will touch on that as we get down below. But just remember, we've got a list of reports here that we can run, and then we've got a list of email templates. Once you have, let's pretend we're going to do annual contributions and we don't have any for this year. Let's do something for, we're looking for any year that's got a, well, because we just deleted all of the donations. So why don't we go back to donations and we're going to do an import. Now, what we're going to do is import randomly generated data against these particular donors and these sponsors and these particular children and we have something called the monthly report from church. 
Um, we're going to ignore the export format on the import format because that's covered in the import export video. Again, a separate video that you can find on wackadoo.info on YouTube. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull this report in and I am going to grab this sample random data import file. And then watch what happens. First it goes through and it imports the actual donations and then it starts assigning them to the sponsors because this report is something that we don't have control over the format of. So there might be misspellings and names and things like that. But we were able to go through and do a number of allocations on the data that came in. Now it was random data and most of the ones that we have are not um, associated with most of the recipients we have, the kids, are not sponsored in this random data set. So we made sure that a couple of them were. And what you see, for example, is that we have three payments for from Cooper Brown towards Justin Howard's um, payments. Uh, so what we're looking at is um, sort of that round robin thing. We went through and we said, okay, there was, en there was enough there for these three months and possibly some more that's unallocated. So what we're going to do, and we look, we go, hey, Cooper Brown, we've got $716 that are unallocated. And you ask the question, why did it stop after three months? And I will we'll tell you exactly why. I'm going to click on Cooper Brown's name, and you look and you see that this is something that Cooper Brown pays manually every three months. So we capped the allocation loop at three months because that's how often he wants to pay. If I go back to my donations for Cooper Brown, you see that those three were allocated, the rest of it was not. If this had been an annual, going back to the sponsors page, if this had been every 12 months, it would have gone out as far as it could. Um, up to the end of the ministry year. What this is demonstrating is the ability to have a person donate money for their child up to their stated frequency of payment, because some people want to pay on a monthly basis, some want to pay every three months, every six months, every year, whatever. This gives you a way to cap that and then have some amount of money that's unallocated that you can turn around and then allocate to other children. And at that point, you're in a manual process for, for doing that. But now take a look down here at sponsorships. You will notice that the sponsorship is moved from 5-1 to 8-1 for all of, well, for Cooper Brown's. Here we go. Cooper Brown's first. We had another one that got bumped up one month. The uh, Natalie Tucker uh, is donated by Blake Cash. So again, we look at, and we goes every six months. So we know that there was enough in there for, ooh, that's a lot of money. <laughs> $1,100 a month is quite a bit of money. Uh, again, randomly generated data doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense, logically speaking. But what we see is that we got one month worth of, well, that tells me that Natalie, that's about half of what Natalie's were. So let's go take a look at Natalie for a minute. And we see that Natalie is sponsored by both Blake Cash and Mia Lamb in this example. Now Mia's sponsorship is only paid through May, but Blake's is sponsored payment is through 6-1 because the website on the import did the math for you to figure out how much does Blake pay per month for Natalie Tucker support. Hopefully that makes some sense without getting into a completely detailed uh, algorithm discussion of how, how we loop through and do all of that stuff. Um, basically, we're automatically allocating that. And then you can come out to your donation page and you can see which donations are unallocated and which ones are allocated. And so we've got a whole bunch of, let's do, let's show all of our, and we'll just scroll down. So we've got all of these different donations that were made now, the reason that these weren't allocated was because there's not actually a sponsorship for any of these other people. So this this would be a situation where maybe you've got, um, you know, people who have not donated before who are wanting to, to help out or you haven't set up the sponsorship relationship there with them. And that sponsorship relationship is simple. It's right here on the sponsorships page. You would say new 
you would go in, you would select your sponsor, and you would select your uh, the recipient ID, the child, and um, you'd set the pay through date for, uh, you'd have to do that one manually if you're going to do that, and you hit save. Boom, done. And now you've got a new sponsorship between Alex Shaw and Jasmine Wheeler. And if I go to, let's do this. Uh, I'm looking for uh -huh. a shortcoming in the system. I don't have that ability. Okay, let's do this. And we're going to go recipient ID. And I'm looking for Alex Shaw. So I'm going to come back up here and go Alex. I'm going to sort by first name, and there's Alex Shaw. And I see Jasmine Wheeler right there. She's an eighth grader, and she's uh, her expenses are $351.34 a month. So you get the idea for how easy it is to do that. Then with this new sponsor, you go into there. You can put their address. Their email is important uh, for contact information. And how often do they want to pay? Do they want it to be automatic? Because frequently what will happen is on a donation, you will have um, a mechanism. And that'll be either they'll write a check or there'll be an automatic deduction or it'll be a credit card. Um, and that's something right now that's, that's managed by the church that oversees this ministry. Um, if I look at the donations, you'll see payment method, um, in this case, is check. Um, so... Now we've gone through and we've looked a little bit at uh, everything down to sort of the bulk emailer. Um, uh, this is, a, again, the mechanism that you can send out if you want to send something to sponsors who are um, all of them or who are subscribed or to the email list because you have to provide a mechanism for unsubscribing um, from email lists. Uh, you have people who are unassigned. These are sponsors who said, I want to, I'm waiting for someone to sponsor. And here we go. There's a long list of people who are waiting for somebody. And here we've got sponsors who are unsubscribed. We've got the sponsorships themselves listed out. Here's a thank you report. Um, I don't have a, any uh, good donations in there. Again, random data set, and it's not hitting every every case here. But you would pick... The report, annual contributions by name, and we're looking for a year. There we go, 2017. Again, random data. And we would say annual contributions. And now what's going to happen here is we have two buttons down here. On the bulk email page, I can send a test email that's going to grab one of these emails, randomly selected one, and send it to this address. Or I can click this button and it's going to send all of these email addresses reports out using this report result set, this email template, and it's going to go through. And the email address it's going to send it to is the one that's in here, which is frankly empty right now. Okay, so I just stopped and took a quick look and I see that Alyssa Hurst and Cooper Sharp do not have email addresses associated with them. If they did, they would be here. And obviously that would generate errors in the, in the email. Um, but what I can do is I can still send this email to myself. I'm going to send this to my work email address, steve at wackadoo.info. And I'm going to fire that email off. And I'm going to put in a test email um, annual contribution example and hit OK. And this tells you a little bit about how you can go into your uh, email templates and, and put things in. Um, again, there's another video that co covers email templates and report templates at great length. And the only difference between a report and an email report is that an email report has a field called email in it. And we see that we were able to send one email. It did not fail. I'm going to pop down here and I'm going to take a quick look and I'm going to wait for that to come back into my inbox. And obviously I'm going to fuzz this part out so that you can't see all the rest of my um, permanent information. Then I am going to wait for that to come in. Come on. We're waiting for that. And there it is. There is our email. 
And I'm going to dismiss that. Thank you, Cooper. Thank you for your generous support. Our contact information for you is as follows. And all of this information is not filled in on my Cooper Sharp uh, donors. We'll see in a minute. But on October 25th, here it was, and it totaled up you know, who the recipient was. There was not a recipient because Cooper does not have any sponsorships. So um, you sort of get the idea of how the bulk emailer works there. And... Uh, is there a child update missing? Um, is there a current academic year, you know, kind of situation? All of these different reports, you can go through and see what's in there, and then we can set up email templates for doing that. Um, but these four seem to be good enough for the, the basic function right now. Should that email fail, one of two things is going to happen. It's going to land in your personal email, the one that you use to set up your user account, uh, remember setting up your user settings. We're not going to go there now. There's another video on that as well, on uh, managing your user information. Or it will get bounced into the email errors um, page, and you'll be able to see it that way. Other than that, we've got a long list of reports that you can look at, that you can run. There are some reports that require, for example, a sponsor to be selected. So if I select a sponsor and then go to reports, you will see things like annual contributions for a single sponsor, for a single sponsor. You, you get that idea, annual totals. That way you can work either with a whole group or with just an individual person as you need to. Uh, then we come down and we have our custom templates. Now, we haven't looked very hard at any of these yet. I'm going to start with report templates. Report templates, again, there's a whole other video on these, but basically you have... Uh, three different kinds of report templates. You've got the query itself, which is an SQL file. You could, with the same name, put in a docx file, um, an Office document kind of thing, or an XLSX, XLSX file. I'll get that straight. And, and export to a, a um, spreadsheet if you would like. So uh, just a quick look in. You see, if you care about it, that is actual SQL that you can put in. Um, and manage that. When you run a report, as you remember from your other one, you have the ability to do an export and you can go to text, XML, XLS. If you have a an XLSX or a DOCX template, then there will be a third button in the middle here that would allow you to do that, but we don't have any of those for this application. You can create them. If you did, it would automatically show up, but that's kind of advanced usage. Under custom templates, we also have email templates. Now, this is where you define what does that email look like that we were sending out on the bulk emailer. Thank you, first name. Thank you for your generous support. First name, last name, address. If I go back up to Cooper Shaw, and I'm going to right now, um, let's go find Coop. Let's go find Cooper Sharp, sorry, not Shaw. You'll see that there's absolutely no information in any of these fields, and that's why that stuff didn't show up. Um, but had it, and we come back down to our email templates, then we see that it would have filled in in these, these places. This account information at the bottom is actually um, the user who is the primary contact who has set up the wackadoo use who set up their use of wackadoo and is paying for the uh, permission to run this application so this would be the head of the per the ministry at the at the church locally that's managing all of these sponsors um, and again you can pick your your entity and figure out what fields you have available and what you want to auto auto populate in here and this is straight html there's nothing special about it um, you know you can go put it in there you can't do any scripts um, but you can do images if you like, um, so that'll that'll work fine. Um, you remember to be very careful when you're doing X HTML templates in email because there are certain things that work in some clients and certain things that don't work in others. Uh, depends upon whether you're using a web browser, whether you're using a, an out like an Outlook as your email client uh, from Microsoft, or if you're um, you know using something on your phone. All all email renders differently uh, in HTML. So now we're going to talk about the import templates. Now, there is a video on import templates, but the short version is that you have the ability to import certain data from a report. 
Now, we have this one called monthly report from church. If I go back to my donations page and I hit import, this is the one that we ran before. It's that same one. It takes the report information, in this case, from the whatever it is that the, the church has given us and allows you to map which fields go in here. There's an entire separate video on that. Please go watch that. Then you have backup and restore. Again, there's a separate video on that. So this is the 9,000, 10,000 foot view of sponsor care. Now, it's been a little stream of consciousness. There have been some hiccups in the middle. Um, certainly, I've stumbled over my words uh, and apologize for that. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to us as shown on the Contact Us page at wackadoo.info or wackadoo.org. Thank you.